Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Welcome back to America's Heroes Group. A roundtable with our partner at the Chicago Regional Office of the Veterans Benefits Administration. June is LGBTQ plus Pride Month. Today is Saturday, June 11, 2022. Our host is Cliff Kelly. I'm Sean Claiborne, the co-host, Army National Guard veteran. Executive producer is Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we have our panelist, Justina Berry. She is a U.S. Army combat veteran and a Chicago VA regional office public contact. And also, Gavin Armour. He's a U.S. Army veteran and a Chicago VA regional office public contact as well. And we're going to talk about benefits available and VBA online resources, particularly to the LGBTQ community. How are you guys doing today? Hi, we're doing okay. Good to hear from you guys again. So what can you tell us about what's going on at the VA? And also, what is new? Because we have a lot of changes that's happened over the last uh, couple of years. So we had we had this conversation with earlier, once upon a time, um, particularly for the people in, in the LGBTQ community. It was very difficult for them to get care um, from the VA, particularly gender reaffirming um, treatment. But now that's not the case. Uh, so what is going on at the VA? And also, um, what are some of the good news that we have? Okay, I think I'll go first. So my name is Justina Berry, and I just want to let um, our veterans know that if their benefits were previously denied because of their veterans' discharge, it will automatically be sent to the VA central office for a second review. And this applies to the claims that are denied due to character of discharge, not just LGBTQ plus veterans. So that's happening, and I just wanted to let, um, I think it was probably covered in the last segment, but even if a veteran doesn't have, you know, an honorable discharge or an upgraded discharge, they can still seek treatment at the VA facility Hmm. for PTSD or any other mental health problems linked to their service and they still may qualify for VA health benefits right away, even without a VA character of discharge review or discharge upgrade. And additionally, with character of discharge, I just wanted to say that um, many veterans don't know that they can still apply for benefits, even with the other than honorable discharge, because the VA can also upgrade it in the VA system to make the benefits honorable for VA purposes. So tell us a little bit about the character, the this bill, or the discharge for a character, because that always was a confusing thing for me, because we have different classifications for discharge, and then some people were discharged uh, perhaps for many different reasons that were other than honorable. Um, and I always had the same idea that you couldn't get VA benefits if you had anything other than an honorable discharge. Um, but people are now able to go back and get VA services with ar- less than honorable discharges? Yes. So how it, like? how it works is they can still come into the regional office or VA.gov. They can file a VA Form 526 for compensation benefits. Um, how that works is we will request all of the records, personnel records, service treatment records, the veteran would just have to submit that VA Form 526-EZ identifying service-connected disabilities that happened to them in service and that they have a current condition for. And then once VA gets the claim, the first thing the VA is going to do is send the client, the veteran a letter saying, you know, we reviewed your discharge and this is what we found. Please send us additional evidence showing, you know, why we should upgrade your discharge. Also in that letter, the veteran has 30 days to request a personal hearing, which in my experience, I don't feel like enough veterans actually request a hearing for the upgrade because at the local regional office, a veteran service representative can hold a hearing with the veteran and that gives the veteran an opportunity to you know, explain their story and explain what happened. Typically, when we receive these claims and their character of discharge is, you know, other than honorable, and we send that letter, um, we don't really hear back from the client or the veteran, or we just don't hear back. So 
you know, the claim goes through, but we need to kind of hear, you know, that helps your case so the VA can upgrade it. Why do you think you're not hearing back from these veterans that are applying? I just think they get this letter and then it just probably overwhelms them and they don't, I don't think that they have enough maybe support or education on on the fact that they can be eligible. I think they go to, you know, one one source to try to get a benefit or like a home loan or education and all of these um, benefits are different. So they'll go to one place like a home loan. Home loan will say, you know, you're not entitled and then I feel like the veteran just feels discouraged. Mm. So I, I just don't want them to feel discouraged because you can definitely still apply. And Gavin, what can you add to that? Because a lot of people, even people that do qualify for a lot of these benefits that the VA offers, or the Veterans Benefits Administration offers, um, feel overwhelmed with the process of trying to get through the red tape and the bureaucracy of trying to access their benefits. It's almost like a switch, right, switch when you, you know, for a lot of people, they feel like that's how they feel. Well, well, I don't want to call it a bait and switch. I think that the VA over the last seven to ten years has done a, a good job um, trying to empower veterans to to take uh, to take their their benefits into their own hands. So part of that, McGavin is first. You got an echo going on. Uh, we have an echo a little bit in your system. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a is little that bit better? Echo. Can you turn on your phone, your cell phone? I think it's just, I might be on if it's your phone or a TV or I'll a radio turn it, or something back there. Okay. Okay. No, I, I have no radio on the back. That's better. Uh, so, okay. So I think the, over the, the last seven to ten years, the VA has done a, a great job trying to empower veterans to take uh, access to their benefits in their own hands. You know, and one way of that is the, the VA.gov website. If you go on there... Um, it, it's literally a, a treasure chest full of really great links and to, to benefits. You know, you can do everything from do your intent to file a claim. You can file your claim there. You can get all the appropriate do, uh, paper uh, forms, or you can apply online. You can get all your access to your educational um, benefits. Um, you can get your letters, your property tax letters, your commissary letters if you're if you're um, if you're awarded that benefit. Um, your benefit summary letters, everything you need. You can make doctor's appointments on VA.gov. You can access your My Healthy Vet. You can uh, you have access to your doctors almost 24 hours a day with secure messaging, being able to reach out to them so when they get in in the morning. They can they can respond to you. Uh, my personal favorite favorite um, is the VA.gov gov app, um, and it's available on Google and the iOS stores. And literally, you you know, again talking to your doctors, you know, access to uh, applying for benefits is right there on your smartphone. You can even upload you if you, as long as you have access to a one of those free phone scanners, you can make a PDF and turn in all your stuff. So, again, you know, I think the the VA is trying to empower veterans to to take control of their benefits, and they and they're making it easier to access it. I mean, I sat with a 75 year old Vietnam veteran, not even Wednesday. He downloaded the app and was able to. And I showed him how to print his own letters, you know. So it's, I mean, it's there, but, you know, like with anything, there, there is a, there, there's an educational curve to it. Um, again, you can go to the, the VA.gov website and look up character of discharge upgrades, and everything is right there for you. Apply, you know, access to the 1010 EZ form for health care benefits. You can have that. You can literally complete that form, walk into the VA uh, hospital with a copy of your DD-214 and automatically have benefits, uh, health care. So, you know, um, just even...
just even going through the the number of apps that the VA is actually sponsoring, it's it's well over thirty. So there, it's there is not a concerted effort to deny mm-hmm. veterans um, their benefits. And in fact, I you know I really believe it because I'm a vet and I'm service connected that they've made it very very easy to to access um their benefits i mean so it just it just takes you know sometimes you just got to be a little hands on or 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 we even even if you even if you cannot do it on va.gov or you cannot do it on the app if you uh go to if you're walking through one of our the va hospital any of them there's a link for vera all over the place and you can scan it with your phone and you can make an online you can make a virtual appointment or you can make an appointment to come into the office. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's, there are many different routes to getting what you need from the VA. And I think you touched on an important part because a lot of the veterans that are out there, the majority of the veteran community is actually our seniors right now. So, because we have, I mean, the military over the, the decades has been, the military population has been shrinking since Vietnam. So a lot of the guys that are in the Vietnam era and older or even really, if you go back to uh, Panama or uh, maybe uh, um, Grenada, that generation older, if you go back from those conflicts, a lot of those guys don't use computers, don't really like using cell phones, want to do things face to face, want to talk to somebody, look somebody in the eye, fill right. out paperwork, things like that. We don't want to fill out paperwork, but they, but that's the route they have to go. Um, so I think the outreach right. part of it is really critical to get to these uh, these veterans so they understand that you know they don't have to sit in their situation that they're in. A lot of people are unhappy. Um, and I, I see a lot of like right. veterans are unhappy and they feel like the, that the VA is against them. Well, no, even if they pick up the phone and call 1-800-827-1000 and they say they want to make an appointment to come into our office, that is honestly the lowest level of technology they have to, to deal with. And if they come in, if they know nothing, if they just come in with your, their DD-214 and they say that they want to file a claim, we're filing a claim when they come into that office, and we're going to assist them to make sure that they turn they that they walk around, away from that that interaction with um, the United States Department of Veterans Affairs satisfied that they got what they wanted. And then, and also, uh, Justina, can you tell us a little bit about um, what's going on with people who have experienced sexual harassment, and also um, any other types of PTSD related. Uh, uh, issues regarding mental health. What are some of the benefits and things that are happening with that? So I would, I always encourage veterans that come in through the public contact um, area in the Chicago Regional Office. Is I always ask them, did you experience any trauma, assaults, or anything, you know, anything traumatic that caused a mental health condition to include PTSD? It's a difficult conversation, but as soon as they tell me yes. I'm either doing an intent to file for them, or I'm doing a VA Form 526EZ, or I'm explaining the actual claims process and what you need to become service connected. Because the first thing you need for service connection is that in-service event or in-service injury or an event that caused a disability. So those events are sometimes overlooked. So, you know, if you were assaulted in service, if you were, you know, sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, um, please, you know, file that claim. Even if you don't have a current diagnosis, you can write a statement about your symptoms and file that claim and the VA will be able to at least send you that, to that exam. I mean, it would help if you had a medical diagnosis but right now you know with the whole pandemic some of these veterans that i've spoken to they haven't even been to any doctor's office in the past two years for you know mental health issues so i would always encourage them to write a statement about what happened to them in service and what their current symptoms are and you know that that can help get the veteran into a VA compensation and pension exam where the doctor will give the third prong of service connection, which is the link, the nexus. 
So I would say as as long as they had something in service and they can write a statement or they have current medical evidence, I would just say file that claim. Because many times the veterans, you know, they don't want to file the claim. They're already discouraged. But, you know, even if you were denied, come see us at the regional office. We can look into why you were denied because you probably got that rating decision and it's probably somewhere in your drawer or you can't find it, you just know you were denied. Come and see us, we can provide you that rating decision and show you what additional evidence you need to reopen that claim. Right. Right. So the key is, you know, outreach on our end and for, you know, for the veteran to just not be discouraged because sometimes there's only there's there could be one piece of evidence that's missing and you just need to refile that claim. And I think that's really significant, right. uh, Justina, because a lot of people who were discharged or maybe got less than honorable discharge were people who were victims of sexual assault. And then that's like a, that's just a, you know, putting assault in a wound where you have a horrible experience that happens to you in the military that's traumatizing, but then you get kicked out of the military because of, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, retaliation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you don't have to have a VA character discharge review or, or upgrade discharge in order to get uh, treatment for any of these types of uh, um, assaults or traumas. If you have sexual trauma, military sexual trauma, PTSD, any kind of mental health uh, uh, issue, you can get services immediately. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. That's, I think that's really good. I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, what else do we have going on that's going to um, encourage veterans to really take advantage of all the benefits that are out there? Because even veterans that are doing good, they feel like their life is great. They had a great uh, post-military experience, but they're not taking advantage of all their benefits. For that, I would encourage, again, either come into our regional office um, or you can actually request a copy of your records which is also important because it, the veteran can look through their file and see, hey, this was actually in, in my record. I can claim it. Because for some of them, it's been many, many years and they don't remember or, you know, they don't remember, like, either they don't remember or it's just they think it's not in their records. But, you know, it could be right there and you, just, you could just file that claim. Yeah. And then a lot of our records right. too are kind of messed up. <laughs> we have a lot of paperwork that's not really where it's supposed to be. <laughs> with a, right. Particularly before the computer age. I remember when I, like when I first, I joined the military in the 90s. 90, I came in 93. And, you know, Apple, Mac, Mac computer, Macintosh computers were all around. They're everywhere. <laughs> they gave me a form on a typewriter. It was made on the <laughs> typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my record. It's, and now you can't even read it because it was a three-part form. So I typed up this three-part form, and I got it on my file. And it's basically a, car a black carbon copy that's something that is faded in age, like a Home Depot receipt or something like that. <laughs> you left in your car right. for five years. I mean, so like, you know, but the, the documentation piece is sometimes the most challenging, I think, for veterans because they don't, I mean, like I said, the records may not be up to date. Sometimes I have conflicting records even when I was discharged. I can't even prove when I was discharged. I got I was discharged three times according to the military. Well, surprisingly, Sean, I, I've seen a lot of 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 documents and records actually uh, get saved, and the and the National Archives does a really good job of uh, of, of preserving those uh, those records. We got we got that so, echo back again. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, oh. Hold on, one second. Yeah. Can you, what about now? That's perfect. Oh, okay. okay. So I think the National Archive and the Department of Defense, they do a pretty good job of trying to ensure that all files are preserved. Um, but again, you know, if you have, if you know, a lot of times veterans may do better jobs. And they'll have paperwork laying around their house in a, in a box or in a file folder. I say bring that, you know, everything, every little thing. Bring it with you, and, and don't and don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, because there are service organizations that are actually located in the VA regional office that that can assist the veteran. Now, I think that's really good too, because people don't realize the veteran service organizations out there. We got to give them a shout out and a hand and a, basically a hand up because they do a lot of work. The civilian veteran service organizations across the United States, like the DAV, um, AMVETS. 
I mean, a lot of these different organizations, America's Heroes Group, we, I mean, working together to try to help veterans get access to their benefits. The reason why I joined the America's Heroes, Group, Heroes Group is because I wanted to help people get access to the benefits that they deserve. I was tired of seeing going in people's homes and seeing people that were veterans living in deplorable conditions and not getting health care and basically isolated from the community. Right. All right. So, so the, the, I guess the big takeaway for this entire conversation is linking underrepresented veterans to, to the VA, to the, not just to the uh, Veterans Benefits Administration, to the VHA, and to the National Cemetery, um, administ- the National uh, Cemeteries Administration. Mm-hmm. That's another thing that I think is interesting. A lot of uh, veterans um, don't really get their families involved enough, particularly because my concern is working with a lot of seniors in my day. Um, they Sometimes their family members don't even know that they're eligible for the VA benefits because the veteran themselves never talk about their military experience. And because none of those, some of those benefits have never been activated, the family doesn't even go get the, get, uh, the burial services, like you mentioned, or a lot of the health services. They're right. struggling trying to get health care from the civilian system but they're not realizing they can get a lot of this stuff taken care of in the VA. And I gotta be honest with, I gotta say this because it's, it's a true fact that a lot of the, every VA is not quite equal. Every VA um, health hospital is not the same. The ones here in Illinois, Jesse Brown is a, is a great facility. I was really impressed with Jesse Brown, Hines also very impressed with it. Not so much with the one in Washington, DC. So Justine, can you guys talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I I am very impressed with the Jesse Brown um, Medical Center. I think it's amazing. Um, they have all the services, you know, available for veterans. But, you know, right next door to Jesse Brown, you have the Veterans Benefits Administration. So I really do like that we are located right next door because I find that a lot of veterans like when they go to register for healthcare, for example, the healthcare um, personnel tell a, tell them directly to come to the regional office, or you know, right. a veteran will be getting um, treatment for like from the audiologist regarding their hearing loss. The audiologist is the one that's telling the veteran, "Hey, go into the regional office and see if you can get any benefits." So I've had plenty of clients come in and, you know, they were, came in on a referral basis. And then also, right. can't, can't right. veterans get access to health care through, uh, they don't always have to go to a VA facility, but they can get, using the VA benefits programs, get access to health care through civilian uh, resources. Yes, but I don't yes. they still have to go through they, the they, VA? Yes, they still should. They should still register with the local VA hospital, and if that and if that service is, um, and I think it's over 30 or 60 days away, you know, from being ser- that veteran is 30 days outside of being serviced or greater, then they can outsource. It. Mm-hmm. And then, and also, the veterans need to understand that there's on the VA website. There's a, I'm pretty sure it's still there. Uh, I haven't looked at it in a long while, maybe about a year or so. But there is actually a rating system for the hospitals in the VA. They actually it's like one to five stars. I think Jesse Brown's got four or five stars. I think Heinz both has also has that. Um, there's some, but they have. Right. You can go through the entire list all throughout the country. You can see if they're one star, four star, five star, whatever. Um, and if they, but go there if you don't trust a facility that you're, that's in your local community, you can use VA benefits to get um, use of it and access of your healthcare through civilian hospitals, civilian clinics, but using VA benefits. Yeah. Say, Sean, I just want to bring up one thing. The the VA hospital system is the largest health care system in the nation, wow. right? And so we're over we're over a million, well over a million veterans using that system at any given time. So, um, you know, again, I'm I'm a proponent of all, everybody. Um, Using the VA system, I use the V. I use Jesse Brown, and I've had positive, you know, positive health care there. Mm-hmm. Also, if a veteran feels that he did, he or she did not receive uh, the best customer service or health care in each hospital, there's a patient, there's a team of patient advocates, right? And they, and their number one job is to ensure that 
that veteran is cared for and is heard. And, you know, and that's important. That's important. I, you know, I've, I've having traveled nationally, you know, I've, you know, it was once I got sick in New Orleans and, you know, the care that I received at that hospital was, was great. So I, I really think across the nation that, you know, with, you know, the, the care that is being given in general is quality, good quality care for our nation's veterans. Definitely agree. Um, I've only had one bad experience with my father at the DCVA. I've taken veterans, multiple veterans, to the Heinz, and also I've been to myself to Jesse Brown and taken people to Jesse Brown. I've always been so much, and I've been so impressed with the level of service and the and the, the the immediacy, the the expediency that you're used to when you're in, when you're in the uniform that you saw in those facilities. Being able to take somebody in, I mean, I had a, I remember I had a, a friend who was a, who got in, got out of the military right before Vietnam. And he, we were on the phone because he wasn't feeling well. We we're supposed to go, you know, do something, whatever. And we were talking about his ailment. And he was like, man, I feel really bad. I'm going to have to cancel on you. And we called, uh, I think it was Jesse Brown VA. And they, and we got in, in touch with a nurse that, that night. On the phone, the nurse, the 24-hour you know health line said, if we don't get him to a hospital now, he may not wake up tomorrow. Wow. And we, I drove him to the mm-hmm. hospital, and he got, he was admitted right then and there. We, st- I stayed in. Actually, I took him to Heinz because that was closer to where he was. We took him to Heinz, and then um, they knew what was going on. They put him in a hospital bed, and like, if I went to the emergency room in University of Chicago, I'm gonna be there for two or three hours. I was with my girlfriend the other night. <laughs> Taking his, her daughter to the to the hospital, uh, one of the, to, one of, to a, a very reputable hospital, one of the best hospitals in the nation, according to U.S. News and World Report, and we sat there for about seven hours, maybe like five hours, maybe not quite seven, five, right. five what it was, but yeah, but we were there at the just at the Heinz, we, and, and eleven o'clock at night, bam, he's he's right in, he's in the bed twenty minutes later, he's getting, he's, he's got all his charts, his results, and stuff I'd have to wait weeks for, he's getting it right away. I was so impressed. Right. 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 They. I mean, the. I mean, the VA, from the VBA down to um, the VHA and NCA is committed to taking care of veterans. You know, but I. But you know, the one. I guess the one thing I can always tell veterans to do is one. You know. You know, the access to the the to to everything is now. Because times have changed, it's online. But again, and, and Gavin, I you need got to cut you off. We're running out of time. I, I really appreciate you guys for coming on our show. Gavin Armour, U.S. Army veteran, Chicago VA Regional Office Public Contact, and Justina Berry, U.S. Army Combat Veteran, and Chicago VA Regional Office Public Contact. It's America's Heroes Group. Be right back. <laughs> 